to my channel. I'm the Redheaded Witch. So today I'm going to go over a bit of my witchy haul that I did during my visit in Salem, Massachusetts. So I just recently celebrated my solar return and for my solar return, aka my birthday, I decided to visit a good friend that lives about an hour away from Salem. So this was the first time that I actually met this friend, we, or like face to face, we met through the online spiritual community and um, we just hit it off really well and we've been FaceTiming so this was an amazing opportunity to spend my birthday weekend with a dear friend. So thank you Kat for being an amazing hostess and showing me around Salem. So my first impression of Salem um, was kind of what I expected. It is a bit touristy just because of you know it, like what it's just turned into. So as far as like what shops we went and visited, I, I was being really careful about like where I put my money. You know, I want to make sure that I'm supporting, um, you know, good businesses. And there were some shops that just felt like super touristy and like didn't really resonate with me. Um, there was one shop that I did make most of, if not all of my shopping at, and that is the cut the Coven's Cottage. My cat is literally laying on all of my things that I purchased, and yeah, that's just his vibe. <laughs> so the Coven's Cottage is a family-owned business, and I made a, a very short TikTok video about this. If you follow me there, then you may have seen it. If not, go check it out. Um, but I mentioned that they don't allow phones inside and what I mean by that is that they don't allow you to take video or pictures inside or to use your phone. I am sure that if you are someone who needs to have your phone available due to emergencies, they will make an exception if you explain that because as soon as you walk in, they do let you know that they don't allow recording or anything like that due to the privacy of the shop and the privacy of the customers. Um, so I just want to put that out there because I know there was a lot of discussion on that particular video about that. Like people felt like really weird about it and I think an individual had like a bad experience because they kept getting warnings about using their phone. Um, it is like a small business and so it's, um, you know, if they have rules like I feel like you need to understand them especially if you want to go inside um but I just want to say like again if you have like an exception or like a really important reason I'm they're so kind there sure if you explain it to them they would not mind so I just want to go ahead and put that out there when I first walked in it was amazing it had so many beautiful dried flowers hanging up they had an amazing crystal collection I don't work a lot with crystals so um, but if you are an, an, a practitioner that does, they had a great selection. They also had a great selection of pre-packaged herbs. Um, I bought two packages, one of them being mugwort to help with my scrying and my dream work. Um, I've not used it yet, so I know that it is something that you need to be careful with and make sure you do plenty of research with. and. Um, always consult your medical physician, your, your doctor, anytime you decide to consume herbs like that. I'm coming down, like I've just gotten over a sinus infection so my throat is a little bit sore. Um, so it's probably gonna go like in and out, I'm so sorry. They also had statues of deities, they had a small book collection as well. They had ethically sourced like bones and um, like furs as well. So if that's something that you have been on the hunt for, looking for, it's not something that I'm able to find locally and that, that I know of. So I was actually kind of excited to find bones there and be able to send them back home to myself. Um, they also have a selection of jewelry. Um, which was something that I set the intention for myself for my birthday. I really wanted to get a piece of jewelry for like almost like a devotional piece to remind myself of my practice. I am going into like a few years into my practice now. Again, it's like so hard for me to determine exact number, but I would probably say like two years like really digging into my practice, really practicing my practice. And I wanted just a reminder of the devotion that I have. And my practice has changed significantly within the last like 
a few months. I mean, if I were to look back from like, it's been officially like a year since I have been sharing my practice online and it has been, it looks so different. So I just wanted a reminder of the growth, the spiritual growth that I've had in my practice. And when I was at this shop, um, I will go ahead and just like share the first, the first, um, piece that I bought, um, is my amber ring actually that I'm wearing right now. Um, so it was really interesting how this came about because I wanted a piece of jewelry uh, for to devote to my practice and as a reminder. And I remember thinking to myself like before I went on this trip, I kind of forgot about it during, you know, on my day because I flew in and we went directly to Salem. Um, so I was kind of, you know, traveling like it's, it's like really weird right now. So. Um, still really weird and so I was just kind of like really not in the mindset of like remembering that so when I was shopping around totally overwhelmed by the beauty of this store and just how kind everything everyone was I didn't really think about seeking out a piece of jewelry so I was looking at something else and I overheard someone looking at rings and I just so happened to like see it and I happened to see the collection that she was looking at and I knew in my heart that this was Amber. And it is a correspondence with a deity that I'm working with and so I just knew in my mind, I was like, that's it. Like that is what you have been looking for, this is it. So I asked the employee, you know, can I take a look? And they were like, absolutely. And so the first ring that I put on, I was like, yes, that's it, absolutely. So this is the ring and it's it's everything that I had ever imagined and more. And just the way that it unfolded was just confirmation to me, like, yes, this is exactly where you're supposed to be. And there were so many synchronicities of, <laughs> of like this trip just being something that I absolutely needed and really catapulted me in a way uh, that I have just been growing in my practice. But anyways, so this was what the first piece um, that I got from my trip. Not the first piece, but one of the first. And um, I will go ahead and just kind of show you what else I got at the Coven's Cottage and um, different things that you can do with these items. So one of the first things that I picked up was actually this horseshoe. So when I saw this horseshoe, I remember something that, um, I want to say it was like a grandmother that told me and maybe an aunt that told me, but the idea that a horseshoe facing upwards like this is for good luck. And I want to say there was a cabin that we stayed at that had a horseshoe, like when we did, when we used to do family reunions. So it's, a, it was a tradition that I grew up knowing about. So when I saw this horseshoe, I was like, I need one for my own home. Like this is something that I knew as a kid and has meaning behind it. So I ended up getting it and I'm super excited. I have not hung it up yet, but um, you can hang these up in front of your door to bring in blessings inside. So if you're unfamiliar with the horseshoe, like I implore you to do some more research of the folklore behind it. I will be using it to bring home blessings into um, yeah, into our space. So the next pieces that I picked up were actually red fox claws and a fox bone. So um, I actually purchased these for my partner because um, he has, he actually has two fox tattoos and um, it's just something that, that resonates the fox reminds me of him and so he's also very interested into like taxidermy and bones and things like that so um i had him in mind when i picked up these items and um i will be using the red fox claws for protection and this is also a really great way to connect with the animal spirit of the bones as well if that is something that is interest interesting to you um, but I know as far as my knowledge when it comes to um, using claws, like I believe even in when it comes to using your own like cat claws, like they naturally shed their claws. You can use that for um, protection as well. So, so yeah, I was, this is not something that I'm able to find easily where I'm located. So I was really excited to find these um, items. <sighs> A little tea break. 
because my voice is starting to go already. So the next items that I picked up are these little cloth bags. And I really loved the embroidery on them. It kind of reminds me of my mom because she's a seamstress and um, I thought these were very sweet. You can use these for multiple, re for multiple ways. So you can do like um, spell bags. So for instance, if you are wanting to focus on dream work, you can research corresponding herbs and place them into the bag and place it underneath your pillow. You can also do that for protection too. If you are someone who experiences nightmares, you can research corresponding herbs um, and place it underneath your pillow as well. You can also do other protective spells um, within the bag. So you can use like bay leaves. Um, bay leaves is one of the ways that you can do protection magic. So you can create a protective spell bag, place it on your altar, place it um, in your home somewhere. You can also wear it. You can put it in your bag. Um, plenty of different ways and so I thought that these were a great um, little addition to my witchy tools. So I actually bought some herbs while I was also there in the shop. I bought mugwort to help and aid um, in dream work and scrying as well as slippery elm which actually helps um, halt gossip. So if you are an, ind an individual who experiences gossip um, this can be an herb that you may decide to use. So I thought that was a little fun thing. I've never actually heard of Slippery Elm and so during some research about it I thought this was a really great little addition to my herb collection. So again I really enjoyed this shop. I think that um, you know the employees there were super kind and I actually had an amazing conversation with one of the employees and I really wanted to go back actually and find out his name or like his contacts because I wanted to continue the conversation that we had. A lot of the deities that I was inquiring about in terms of statues or books he had also had you know been working with them and so um, I just thought that again synchronicity was just so uh, mind-blowing for me and again was just confirmation like this is you know someone else resonates with me and where I'm at and it just felt really good uh, to talk about and so um, yeah if you get a chance to visit I recommend it and be sure to let me know your experience as well um, and what your thoughts are and I know that they have an online shop as well so maybe check that out too so the next spot that I purchased from I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me but the the name of it will kind of reveal what I bought there and it's something wands um, a wand is a tool that I have never considered in my practice but when my friend took me to the shop it was so I knew immediately it was something that I really wanted to use in my practice so the woman that was currently working during my shopping experience was so insightful, so knowledgeable, and I love to hear her stories about these handmade wands and how each one kind of had its own correspondences. The one that I chose is this one, and I really felt drawn to the natural wood, I felt drawn to the spiral effect, and she told me that the inspiration behind this was the unicorn. The unicorn represented healing energy and creativity. And these are both energies that I am invoking into my life and it just really resonated with me. A wand is a great tool to help you direct your energy during spell work and it's also representative of the element air. So another great thing to have on your altar if it's something that resonates with you. And it didn't resonate with me for a long time until I literally set foot into this little shop. I mean, it was tiny and it just felt so right. And when she was telling me about this one in particular, I knew that it was something that I wanted to have in my practice. And I'm really excited to use it. I've not used it yet and um, yeah. So this is it. It's just kind of like a natural wood. It's got a nice spiral to it. And there were plenty of other wands. Um, I know that there's also like uh, crystal wands if that's something that you're interested in. So I just really liked the natural wood material. So the last space or the last shop that I bought anything from was an apothecary. And 
I will actually see, I can't remember the name of it too. I'm so bad with names. Um, I actually didn't do a lot of filming while I was in Salem except for the one video I did of the Coven's Cottage because I honestly just wanted to experience the energy, experience just my visit in general. So I was just completely avoiding social media or like having my phone out. But the last, but, um, the last spot that we shopped at was an apothecary, and there were so many herbs, so many herbs, and I was like in dreamland. But I had to remind myself that um, I couldn't take, I can't take everything home. <laughs> um, I ended up sending myself, mailing myself a box back because of some of the items that I had. Like, I just like, I don't know. I felt like weird taking on a plane with me. I know it would have been fine, but like. I don't know. So I also like just wanted to have like a seamless journey through security because uh, I already have anxiety as it is and going through security just like escalates it. So um, which brings me to the first herb that I decided to get was lemon balm. So my experience with lemon balm is um, my brother's girlfriend made, made me a tea um during the holiday season and it was rose lemon balm and tulsi this tea was so good to heal the heart to heal um emotional wounds especially if you experience any sort of trauma lemon balm is really great to help you soothe your throat which honestly i should probably be using this right now <laughs> when we experience trauma of some sort uh, sometimes we get stuck in our throat because we're not able to speak our truth and so this was a tea that really helped me during the winter season last year when I was really going through um, some really inner work, some deep inner work, you know, during the dark time of the year. It's when I tend to just go inwards and focus on a lot on shadow work and shedding a lot of layers. So this was a tea that really aided me during that time period and I wanted to remake it. And um, I was unable to find lemon balm uh, during my like when at my local apothecary shop and it just was never in stock so I went ahead and grabbed some and the price in there was amazing too um, so I'm really excited I'm, I love lemon balm and also tastes amazing with some honey the next herb that I got is nettle leaf and nettle leaf I've learned a lot about through another TikTok creator um, named the Vlasta she is a Slavic witchcraft practitioner and her content is amazing. Please go follow her. She is just an amazing person and I have really enjoyed chatting with her and just like learning about Slavic witchcraft through her. Um, but she has content on nettle leaf and the protection properties of it and how it's used in Slavic culture, such as making clothing out of it, which is amazing. I can't remember if it's even, um, available at my local apothecary because I've not looked. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed it for protection spells. So that kind of concludes majority of my little witchy haul. I um, have some other little tidbits here and there, like um, some candles that I bought, some jars that was gifted to me from my dear friend. Um, I also bought a book, a book. <laughs> I also bought a book on a deity that I'm working with. So during my visit in Salem, you can also visit like the, um, you know, the museum. You can also visit, I think we went to the witch's dungeon, I think is what it was called. Um, but we purchased, we purchased like a reenactment of an actual trial and um, just learning about the history of the witch trials and being able to witness like the grounds of which um, it was a happening. There's also the cemetery of the individuals who were found guilty and murdered. And this was an opportunity to really pay respect to that, to them. Um, I didn't, I didn't film, I didn't like take pictures or anything like that. It felt very strange to me, but you can see like that there is a lot of, you know, um, respect for those individuals because there is always flowers on their tombstones and, um, I wanted to provide my offerings as well. And it was just really eye opening to the history that took place there. So I would say I had a really great experience. I also had an opportunity to explore um, the Appalachian Mountains up in New Hampshire 
and this mountain range is one it's the one that I grew up in in Western North Carolina and so um, connecting with the mountains but like in a different state was really remarkable we explored the flume gorge I believe it was called and that was amazing it was so magical I truly felt like I was like in historic times like it was just uh, truly eye-opening to like how amazing mother nature is and just like uh, it was amazing it was a beautiful experience so it was really interesting because during um our walk on the trail i actually encountered like this birch bark and i had an amazing experience about like over a month ago now with a dear friend um where I did a releasing ritual in my hometown. And while I was doing the guided meditation, my friend, my dear friend, um, put together a fire using birch bark because it was one of her plant allies. And I was, um, this was the experience that completely shifted my entire practice. And so while I was walking on, the, on this trail in New Hampshire and saw this bark, I picked it up and I knew that I needed it for my altar. Birch is a correspondence of protection, cleansing, as well as new beginnings. And it just called to me. It was like, this is exactly where you need to be in your practice and you are just growing. And it was a beautiful reminder again of like, start, you know, a new age, quite literally a new age for myself and just a new beginning altogether of my practice, who I am, like what I'm wanting to invoke in this new year. So this is something else, a little just magical piece of my, you know, from my trip. So that concludes my little witchy haul that I did during my stay in Salem. Um, if you end up visiting Salem, be sure to leave a comment and let me know what your experience was like, what favorite shops you ended up going to, and if you um, have any of your favorite items that you bought from that, from your visit. I wanna quickly shout out to my Patreons. Um, thank you so much for your support. Um, I appreciate each and every single one of you. If this is something that you're interested in joining, I have two tiers, one is $3 and one is $5, and I will leave the link below. Um, most of my content entails paganism, witchcraft, and self-healing. So if that resonates with you, be sure to check it out. And thanks again for coming along, and I will see you next time.